uh, Steve Cassidy here. I want to do a short video introducing jQuery. jQuery is a library for JavaScript. So here's the home page here, which um, makes writing JavaScript a bit easier. Uh, and so it's one of the toolkits and libraries that we'll use for JavaScript uh, in this course. Um, the documentation for jQuery is quite good and you'll find lots and lots and lots of examples of people using jQuery all over the web. So it's quite a good library, very, very commonly used uh, library for handling JavaScript. And its main strengths are it makes it very easy to find the things in the page that you want to modify or, or add event handlers to and it, then it makes it easy to add those event handlers and make those changes. Um, so we can see some examples here on the front page of the jQuery website here. Uh, so with this, this syntax here where we're saying dollar, dollar is the jQuery function as I'll explain in my notes, um, and button.continue. So that is a selector which is the same kind of selector that you would use in a CSS style sheet. So that's a button element with the class continue. And then this says make the HTML inside that B next step and that will just change the content of that uh, and similarly here then we're selecting a something with the ID of banner message and then we're adding a um, an on click handler to that so I thought I would look at so there's some notes here and I thought I would look at a little example uh, and it's one that we've done in a couple of contexts before for um, uh, finding out what I like. So it's just a basic form input uh, and it's going to make a list of things that I like. But we're going to do it this time instead of with, uh, there's going to be no back end, so there's going to be no database or anything at the moment. It's just going to be purely within the page. Uh, so it's all going to be HTML based and uh, we're going to update the page. Uh, and so it's not a long lived real application, it's just the sign of, sign of thing that's running in the page itself. So I've got a very simple page structure here. I have um, loaded a style sheet that I'm not doing anything with it just now. I'm using codepen.io here, by the way, which is actually quite a nice little environment for playing with JavaScript um, uh, examples uh, because it gives you this sort of live preview and it's all in the web. And you can set up projects and things like that in, under your login, so that's quite nice. Um, so I've got a very simple example here. I've got a body and I've got a form. So this is the similar form that we've used before. Uh, it's the like, I've got an ID on the form, but I don't have an action uh, an, or a method because I'm actually not going to submit this form uh, to a web server. There's no web server at all here, uh, except the one, the code pen one that's serving this content. Um, and it's got an input uh, of a thing that I can enter and a placeholder there and uh, a type submit. And so you can see down the bottom how it renders that placeholder comes up there and we've got our submit form. And then I've got a, uh, a list of likes. It's an old ordered list. It's got an ID of likes, but it's got nothing in it. And so my goal is when I type something in this box here, I want to submit that and I want it then to enter, be entered into there. And what you saw there was the, uh, the page being submitted. So you see a URL uh, the, the page flicking because it's sending it to the server and coming back. Now this is a static server, this is a server that's not understanding any form submission so it just serves the same page back again. Uh, so that's not quite what we want. We want to make it actually run some JavaScript. So that's my problem that I want to try and solve. Let's go to the JavaScript file. So this is the index.js. I've got my uh, sort of standard boilerplate JavaScript. Remember this is a uh, an anonymous function that is immediately called. So I've got the, I've wrapped it in there and that's to uh, keep anything that we write in here uh, in global, in, in local scope so it doesn't become global scope. So the first thing to look at is how we um, make our uh, JavaScript run. What I'm going to do, so the approach to this is that we will we'll have a form and we will add an a handler to the form so that when I click that submit button uh, instead of the default thing happening which is that the data gets sent to the server I will arrange for my JavaScript function to run. 
so I'm going to add a handler to this that uh, will run when I submit the form. So the first thing to do is to identify this form. So this form has an ID of like form, and so I can use the um, jQuery notation uh, like this. So jQuery, the dollar stands for jQuery. So jQuery like form, and that is the selector which will be our element. So that there is an expression that evaluates to the form that we want. And now I can add a submit handler. All right. And this submit handler can be a function. And a, a handler in JavaScript takes an event as an argument, optionally. You don't actually have to put it in if you don't want to use it. Um, and uh, let's, let's do um, that standard thing of putting out an alert just to see if it's all working. So when I save that, uh, my page is reloaded. And uh, let's see if this works. OK, so then we have our alert for hello. And when I close this, what will happen is that it will carry on doing what it would normally have done, which is to send the form in. OK, so we actually want to prevent it sending the form in because we want to do all the work within the page. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, use this event here and do this, which says, uh, after you've done the alert, prevent the default thing happening. The default thing happening with an event is that, in this case, the submit event is that it sends the data to the server. So prevent that default thing happening. Um, in other cases, the default might be following a link, for example. Um, so prevent that default thing happening and, and uh, make it so that uh, the page doesn't get submitted. So now we've reloaded. I like cheese. And uh, we have our, our little message here. And now when I click go, you see nothing happened. The form didn't get submitted. And we still have cheese there. And I can press it again. And again, it doesn't get submitted. So now there's no request being sent off to the server. So we've essentially hijacked this form. It doesn't now do what it normally would do, which is to submit to the, um, the uh, uh, web server. It just calls my piece of JavaScript code. So the next thing is to try and, uh, well, we've got two things to do. One is I want to get whatever it is that was typed into this input box. And the second is I want to actually stick it into this place here. So let's do that second one first because we can sort of have a go at that. So instead of alert hello, what I'll do is I'll try and find. So I'm going to find this unordered list likes, and I'm going to try and add something to it. So again, using the JavaScript notation, uh, the jQuery notation, the uh, hash likes. So hash is the ID. So this is the, I, the thing with an ID likes. So this is that unordered list. And I can just say. There are a few different ways to uh, add something into uh, an element. Uh, I can just append a list item. Um, I'm going to plus thing. Okay, so there, and I'm just going to say var thing equals hello, just for now. But what we're obviously going to do is make thing be the the thing that was typed in. So now I have my um, piece of JavaScript that's going to try and whenever I type something in it's going to try and add it add hello to this list so if I say cheese and submit we get hello if I say it again we get hello um, we get chips we get hello okay so what we're doing so what this is doing is finding that element there and appending something to it I hope you can see already that jQuery is actually making this quite a little bit more compact and, and a bit easier. Um, using this notation, we don't have to use document.getElementById, getElementById, and you don't have to sort of jump down. And it's actually quite a bit easier to do what we're doing here. Uh, so that's the power of jQuery. Everything's fairly compact and, and quite, uh, quite straightforward. Um, so the job now remaining with us is we, we want to insert 
this text here in this place instead of just the, the, the hello. So let's uh, work out how to do that. What we're looking for is this form that we found. Um, we want the thing uh, element there. So the thing that's got the, the input element has got the name of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a uh, oh, let's get that one back again. So we're going to set thing right but here we're going to say var uh, the input that we want to get and then I'm going to look for um, so the like form um, and actually no let's let's do it a different way okay so I was what I was going to do is just go and find that uh, uh, thing right from scratch but we know that we are um, we have a variable called this and this in, in JavaScript represents the, the current thing. And in the context of this um, function, the current thing is the form that we are actually submitting. It's uh, the thing that this um, event handler is bound to. So this corresponds to the form. So in JavaScript, in jQuery notation, dollar brackets this is our element that we can find. Um, and I'm going to find all of the children that are inputs and uh, have a name which is equal to, and I can't remember what it was now, uh, name equal to thing. Okay, thing. Right, and so here you can see some other elements of the um, uh, thing that we're doing here. Um, so we can use this selector input, that's the name of the element, and this square bracket says and there is an attribute called name which has a value thing, so that will select down to those. That is children, so it's going to select all of them that match that, but there's only going to be one of them, obviously. So that's our input. And so now we have this uh, input. Um, we can use this, the, the dot .val um, uh, method tells me the value that is in that cell. So now I've found this input uh, element here, and I've got the value. So my thing now that I'm going to insert here should be the thing that I type in. So let's see if that works. Moment of truth. There we go. Cheese. Eggs. OK, so you see that the form is not being submitted. It's not being sent to the server because we have prevent default and it's adding the new elements as I type them in. But one uh, sort of thing that could be improved, every time I submit it, uh, the same thing is still entered there. So what if I want to get rid of that as if it's being sent to the server? The way I can do that is by, so this, this uh, expression here is also able to modify the value. Uh, so here I can say that the value should be, after I've appended the thing, uh, reset the value to be the empty string. So let's see the effect of that. Okay, so now you see it uh, inserted it here, but it removed it there. Okay, and so now we have our little application that uh, is able to uh, record things that we like and insert them in the page. Now, this looks like it behaves just like the previous one we wrote, which had a database yeah. in the back, or the one that we had cookies and so on. But here there's no server. We didn't write any server-side code. We wrote only client-side code. Uh, and so all that's happening here is that it's sort of modifying the page. As soon as I refresh this, then that list goes away, obviously. Uh, so this is not a particularly useful application. It just makes me la lets me make a list. It's just showing you uh, how we can do things in this front end world. So there's a little example of um, constructing a jQuery based uh, event handler and um, uh, adding it to our page. Now, one thing, uh, one extra thing that I'll do here. Uh, is uh, another sort of bit of jQuery um, boilerplate or standard things we do. What I've done so far is that I've defined in in my page, I've actually got, uh, maybe I didn't point this out before, I've linked 
the jQuery library from code.jQuery.com. So I've loaded that in a script. And then I've loaded my index.js, which is this file that I've been editing. So by the time we get here, and I'll put those at the bottom, by the time we get here, everything should be, the whole page should be built. But we usually like to uh, ensure that this code that's adding event handlers only gets executed when we're ready, so when the document is actually ready to, to run. And that's why we stick it at the end. But jQuery actually has a, a nice safe way to do that, and that's this. So the document ready method um, is a way of um, basically running some code, and we're just going to run this code here. We're going to run that code when the document is ready. So it's another handler, in fact, it looks, looks like our submit handler, uh, and it's on the document object. This is the document object. Uh, so when it's ready, then run this code. And so this is like a, a sort of standard guard of things that you want to be to do when uh, you are ready to when the document is ready and it's all complete. Um, and so we can do that. We can test that again, and that works. Okay, so that's just the, the final little nuance. Uh, as you saw, it, it's not really needed in this case because we've got a very simple page. But when you are writing uh, sort of big chunks of JavaScript and you want something to happen at the uh, on document load, then you can use this document ready function uh, handler to make sure that your particular handler goes at the right time. So that's just a little introduction to jQuery, showing you some little examples. Um, jQuery is big. I've got some notes there. Uh, the documentation is quite good. As I said, and there's lots and lots of examples. Um, so you can feel your way around jQuery and learn uh, how to do things and uh, how to make the most of it. Thank you.